Lines currently three to up. You can watch every table, all three, on Discovery Plus. Just Best of seven. This is last 64 of the Northern Ireland Open. And it's Judd Trump to get us underway. Thank you. The first frame, Judd Trump to break. Well, there's a bit of a storm outside here in Belfast. The tournament, of course, is being played for the Alex Higgins Trophy, the Hurricane, so maybe that's apt. But inside, the action gets underway on day one, the afternoon session. Judd Trump against Eastpreet Singh Chada. Neil folds alongside me. It's one of those matches, Neil, maybe a couple of months ago, Trump would be a, a massive favourite, but we know how well Chada can play. Beat Mark Selby, of course, at the English Open. Played well at the English, didn't he, uh, Judd's opponent? So that's uh, something to, to work on. It's his second season as a professional, and you saw glimpses of what he could do last season, and more than a few glimpses this season with that terrific run in Brentwood. Of course, this is an extremely tough match for him. One. Got a shot at the black, but not to pot it. Yeah, I mean, he wouldn't, in the best of seven, suggest that uh, Judd is any sort of a certainty to win. There are matches sometimes that are a little lop lopsided like that, but the way that the tournament has changed in its configuration now, that there are a couple of qualifying matches, there are fewer of those sort of one-sided first-rounders that you might see. It's and this, I don't think, one. is one-sided necessarily. Well, it's a special tournament for Trump. He came here in 2018, he'd, he'd won tournaments, but he was a rather sporadic winner. He'd won eight ranking events to that point. Six years on, he'd won 29. So that was the start, really, of his great run of being a regular winner. We heard in the interview with Alan that he likes the venue, the crowd get involved. There was a lot of people here at 10 o'clock this morning for the first session. It points to what could be another successful week for him. First year, actually, he withdrew. He didn't play the first year, Trump. Second year, lost to Stuart Carrington round one. He'd been travelling a lot in the sort of best of spirits. But since then, in this tournament, he's been the man, hasn't he? Four wins. Oh. oh, it's not the end of uh, the world, forward. that Cuba going in off. Yeah, that match with Stuart Carrington, which Judd played, as we see a replay of this in off here, which, as I say, wasn't a terrible outcome. You know, let's be honest, Judd didn't cover himself in glory that day. Maybe in some ways it helped him because he conceded the, the last frame with a number of reds left and thrashed his cue at the balls. One. It seemed an awfully long time ago in somebody's career because... As you heard, he's won this event multiple times. Four times, three in Belfast, of course, once in between that. One of those finals against Ronnie O'Sullivan was during lockdowns. It was in Milton Keynes, where oh. everything was. But he's got a great record here at the waterfront, including last season. He seems to be quite good at winning best of seven frame matches. Now, we do say they're quite short format, and they, they undoubtedly are, but it doesn't often affect Trump. Yeah, it's a curious thing about this event. It's only ever been won by left-handers. Eleven. So eight stagings, all left-handed winners. Four of them have been called Mark, and of course the other four will be called Judd. Twelve. Yeah, I must admit, I was looking through the left handed plays in the draw, thinking the same as if it might be another one, a Jack Lazowski or somebody of that nature, Barry Hawkins, but I guess stats are there to be broken. There's no guarantee it'll be a, another lefty, but this man is, as usual, going to take all the beating. Great atmosphere of the weekend here. I mean, as you say, it was good earlier today. But when it comes to the finals, again, the semis and the final, the, uh, 
The Belfast crowd really do warm to the players. Yes, they've got their favourites, but they just love snooker. Meanwhile, Trump just looking to put his stamp on this match from the off. If you're the, the underdog, you're obviously hoping to catch the top player on an off day, but if you can win the frame in one visit, the first frame, you're telling them, well, it's not going to be an off day. Yes, that's not the cannon he was looking for, but the, the good news is he's still got a red to left middle. He would have played to miss that red and try and finish behind it to the right corner. Well, the reason, as Dave said, they walked out because the match was still going, that was on lines against Josh Cooper. That's now concluded lines as one. So there's not a huge delay to the match at that table. There you can see on the far left. That was actually from the qualifying. Well, he was in the semis of the British Open and there was an overlap. So he's actually got to play Ricky Walden tomorrow to sort of catch up and get into this round, which is the last 64. Ishpreet Singh Chard has come through two qualifiers himself. He's beaten Florian Nursler and Ashley Carty, but already watching on here as Trump does his stuff. Referee Alex Crisan, I don't think the pink ball will spot, so he's putting it in the little gap below its spot. It's the only place it will go, down the, the line of the spots down the centre of the table. Thank you. It's a pretty Thank you efficient it. job done by Alex there. Thank you. Looks to be queuing okay. I mean, it, just occasionally recently, the odd match he's thrown in a not a brilliant performance. Sometimes still one matches, but in half a frame, it's so far so good. I'm lucky that the break has come to an end there. 42. Quite hard to generate a lot of pace from that shot to get into the bunch and really open them. Well, the only good news is a red has gone safe on the cushion. So he's 45 in front. John Tegump, 42. Yeah, it was great to see such a big crowd here this morning. Of course, Jordan Brown was on from Antrim. Unfortunately, he didn't get through, but he had a lot of support. Yeah, it was a good game. Robert Milkins beat him 4-2. Of course, Mark Allen is due up tomorrow. Now, what's he found here? He's looking at some kind of a plant to the left corner, I think. He's certainly looking at getting the cue ball to safety either way. He hoped that it would just squeeze off the third red, but it didn't touch the other ball. It wasn't really a natural shot to nothing from Trump playing that red. Half a chance, this. Yeah, it's not simple because of queuing from the side cushion and rolling it in. Played, wasn't he by CJ Wuhan? I think you can accept that when someone plays that well. In general, he's had a very successful campaign already. That world number one sort of race is, is settled for well, quite a time, I would suggest. Of course, he's won in Shanghai, not a ranked event, but big tournament, won in Saudi, runner up in the Zhang Grand Prix.
one. It's happened to him a couple of times this season, though, isn't it? Because not only the CJOE match, but he lost to Ruiza in the English, and he could have lost to him in Saudi, a 4 0 deficit at one point. So he's uh, feeling the pinch a little bit in some matches with the younger generation of players coming through. Six. Seven. You mentioned the best of seven record, which, as you say, is excellent. I think one of the reasons is he, he treats all these tournaments with... I don't think he sort of ranks them as such. He just sees a trophy and wants to win it. Rounding as a junior, he would have played so many, obviously, junior events over short distances. Got to beat him, oh. that's bottom line. And see Joel Wee did so brilliantly. Thirteen. Yeah, I think it's very easy for players to say they're going to uh, rest up and pick and choose. Yes, some players do do it, but others, it's almost fear of missing out, really, isn't it? You'd be maybe watching this event from home. 18. If you're not playing in it, he doesn't really want any part of that. He's close to getting the frame one here, anyway. He's taken that well, and that red just about clinches it. 19. Yeah, this is, I think, the, the challenge for Charder. Obviously, coming into this event, he's on the main table from the off against a top player. At least in Brentwood, he had a few rounds on the outside tables. To ease himself in, he had some great wins there. He beat Graham Dot, Jack Jones, Hossein Vafai, Hergo Chang, and obviously Mark Selby. But by the time he played Selby, he was nicely played in at the venue. This is a bit of a baptism of fire, you've got to say, against Trump. Twenty-six. Thirty-seven. Thirty-four. Thirty-five. Just played the one shot to nothing safety, which did leave an opportunity. Otherwise, it's a pretty good frame he started with here, Trump. Forty-two. Forty-three. Yeah, great memories for him coming back to the waterfront. Of course, in three finals in a row, he beat Ronnie O'Sullivan. One was actually played in Milton Keynes because of the lockdown. Fifty. But even so, three times in a row, he beat him nine-seven in each final. Fifty-one. Might see a few shots here. It's a nice way of playing on the yellow, isn't it? Because usually the green would be in the pathway of that shot, but it was very subtle. Excellent positional shot, that one. 60. in the match, but so often a player might not start very well. He looks good. 67. And, uh, Ishpri has certainly got a match on his hands, which I guess he already knew. But even more so, perhaps, on what we're seeing. 72. Just one frame, I guess. There is a chance. Chances will come his way. Well, Judd Trump has dominated the first frame. He got the lead, and then from that chance made 72. So looking for a fifth Northern Ireland Open title, already 1-0 up here.
So we've got three tables, and uh, on table two, it's an interesting one. Jack Jones has been a little quiet, hasn't he, since getting to the world final in the spring, but here he is, looking good to win this opening frame against Alexander Ursenbacher from Switzerland. Yeah, Jack Jones, of course, that incredible run at the Crucible and you know, put Wilson under pressure, Corin Wilson under pressure in that final <coughs> session. Right now, he's 15 in the world, so he's trying to bed down his top 16 seeding for the UK Championship and, and then for the Masters to make sure he's in York and at Alexander Palace. Interesting matchup, isn't it, these two? Because the similarity in their styles, their techniques more so. And Ersan Backer, well, he's been a, something of a disappointment, really, an underachiever. He's got all those wins against O'Sullivan to his name. But Jack Jones, I don't think he's got more ability than Ersan Backer, but he's got something in the way of mental strength and fortitude. Maybe the reason that he's got to the heights he has, but you would have thought that Ersan Backer would be capable of achieving good things in the game too. Certainly this frame is long gone. I think what he did both years at the Crucible, because of course he got to the quarters last year as well, was he found a way to neutralise opponents. They struggled to play their best snooker against him. Trump certainly did. He was pretty poor against him. Neil Robertson last year. See Joel Wee actually in round two this year. Just struggled to produce the good. So Jack Jones got to try and bring that now to the other tournaments as well. I think he's a player that likes the longer matches. I know that you wouldn't un maybe see that as a like a marathon race against a sprint, but there's something about the longer matches that certain players like, and he's one of those players, as is underlined by his performances at the Crucible. So 88, not a century, but a frame-winning break. Good start for the World Championship runner-up. So, Judd Trump, 1-0 up already here in the Thank last 64 of the Northern Ireland Open. Waterfront Hall, of course, a great concert venue here in the centre of Belfast. Very much established as the home of the Northern Ireland Open. First year at the Titanic Centre. But this uh, is a formidable venue. Judd Trump was saying, you know, it reminds me of the Masters. That's quite a compliment. Maybe some movement there, catching Judd's eye. Perhaps the players emerging on the other table for the afternoon session that was just slightly curtailed or delayed on that table. It's a nice kiss. One. That is a very nice on the red. There you see players just over on that far table. So this is a very good early opportunity. Eight. Nine. Well, he's got the shot to plough into the bunch if he wants to go down that route. Uh, he's choosing not to. Sixteen. Seventeen. Might be a red that goes to the right corner. Top of the bunch. Yeah, that's what he's played on, rather than, again, not thinking that it was the best angle to open the Reds. 24. There's the one, right through the gap. 25. 
Jones, take it a few reds and blacks 32. here. Could be the shot is to play up on the blue, or will he try and stay on the blacks for a bit longer? Right shot is to play up the table. I think that's what he's doing. 33. Deserves to be on one. He played it quite nicely. 38. Keeble really did travel with speed into the bunch. And he might be on one. That's very good stuff. With a lovely red. Cushions like that. Yes, a bit of early concern for Ispreet Sinchada. Problem with best of sevens and not a lot of time to settle. And of course you can't settle if you're just sat watching. 41. There's a couple of reds that might 42. be a plant in that right corner as well that we've just got a glimpse of. They're all lined up though, aren't they? Whichever way you look at it, it's a wonderful chance now. 49. Let's pop to right corner. 50. Fifty-seven. Fifty-eight. So, his hope is that this break comes to an end a bit sharpish, and he has pushed a red in the way of, a, of another red, so it's not quite as straightforward now as it might have looked three or four shots ago. Yeah, it's slightly, maybe even more than slightly gone wrong. That came as a surprise that the frame was not clinched at this visit. I mean, the red is closest to below it in the corner. It might be a shot, but you'd have to get all kinds of equipment out to reach it. I don't even think you can. I don't think it's I think it's one of those rare occasions where you just couldn't access that red. Just jump, 65. Just a glimmer of hope in this frame for Ishpreet, which didn't seem there. It's only slight worry. He doesn't want to put a colour safe. The black's not gone safe, thankfully, and that's not the worst little nudge on the yellow. So, you know, if a chance were to come Mishpreet's way from here, the frame could be snatched by him. Yes, he's had no table time, but he knows that this frame's not quite done.
contact made. He's got no table time, Ishbri, and that would be a big concern. This is a nice attempt. Get through to a red, but even then, uh, even that shot just tells you that Ishbri Singh Chala does know his way around the table, plays good shots. But that's an even better one from Trump. In a bit of trouble here because he's got a red that he could part, but even then it's a difficult part and the cue ball just goes into the black. You don't know where it's going to finish. Might have to try the pot it though. Might be his only way. Hmm. Well, I understand what he was hoping for. He was trying his best to make something of this frame, but now he's left another chance. I don't think he's done a lot wrong so far, but he's being kept away from the table. One. Yeah, I think we've seen there the other side of Trump's game that, of course, has developed so much over the years, his safety. So he, he still needs this black in, and then Charter here will need two snookers. He was in trouble. And he's in more trouble now, because it looks like he's 2-0 down. Yeah, he played it cleverly, Trump. He, he took it on knowing Eight. that he could miss it and leave a chance, but not playing on a red. Kind of made the pot easier for him, and it will be 2 0 now, barring something very unlikely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, that's another terrific pot. That puts the uh, question beyond doubt in terms of where this frame's going. And we've only been going. Oh, about 25 minutes playing time. 15. Sixteen. Twenty-one. Touching one. <laughs> well, if that had come off, you could have given him the trophy, I think, right now. Dr. Gump, 21. Each pretty sing child is going to come and play a few shots, and that's not a bad thing, because he's had very little table time, as we saw, so he can just get his hand on the table here. Trump was trying something very extravagant One. there. Yeah, I think he's right to carry on because there are all these people that seem to say that uh, you know when the frame is with snookers required, you, it's end of frame. But having gone 25 minutes without potting a ball, I think he deserves to knock a Eight. few in. It's almost like an extended practice session. Frame's long gone. Yeah, I mean, it's different, isn't it? On the main table, obviously, with the lighting, the camera guys around the table, and just, you know, your centre of attention as well. And he hasn't had that much experience of that. The semi-final in Brentwood, he did freeze a bit. There's nothing, no shame in that at all. It was a massive occasion for him. 16. Who is a beating 6-0. But he's taken a big step towards staying on tour at the end of the season, which, of course, has got to be one of his main aims. Probably is his main aim for the rest of the campaign. 17. There's his mother very proudly watching on. Of course, we saw her 
in Brentwood. These home nations we've seen over the years, they can throw up, you know, some surprises in terms of players going deep, reaching finals, reaching semi-finals. Played a few shots, but it is Judd Trump's frame. He's looked very good so far, Trump. And inside half an hour, he leads 2-0. Yeah, as I say, Trump's been uh, looked impressive. He, he seems to start these matches so well, and he's just ready for the start of play and to start producing it from the off. Yeah, I thought he looked good. You know, he, he's so dangerous. He's a bit of a one-off Trump, isn't he? I mean, as a player, there's a, there are other leading players, but I don't think any of them play the game in the way that does. You know, he's got an all-round game. He's he plays clever shots, but also he's got this range of pots that. He can knock in towards the end of a frame, but you know he is a complete match player now. But I don't think any other players I can think of do it in quite the same way. Controlled aggression now has been his his strength. He's very good. I thought he was going to get in and make a, quite a few here, but he didn't go on and quite clinch the frame from this chance. He's very just made it off the left jaw. So he hasn't given his opponent much to aim at in these couple of frames. His preet has just disappeared to a, for a toilet break, but he's not played much of a, a part in, so far this, this encounter. No, I mean, the, the stats obviously all favouring uh, Trump right now because he got in right at the start of the first frame, Charter, but couldn't do much. Trump at 95%, very impressive, made very few errors so far. His safety's been very good as well. I mean, well, 100%, I guess, speaks for itself. Made that 72 break in frame one. So, so far, so good for him. And this next frame, a big one, clearly. If he wins that as well, then it just seems very unlikely that his opponent's going to turn it round. So, if Charter is going to make an impact on the match, surely it's got to start in this next frame. Just to say, uh, on table two, Jack Jones going well. 2 0 up against uh, Alex Ersenbacker. So, uh, fast start for him. Of course, Matt Selton, Lou Heyshen. They start a little later because that's a wait for the table to become free. So they're still in frame one. All live, of course, on Discovery Plus. Judd Trump facing Charter nil. The first match of uh, the afternoon session on day one of the Northern Ireland Open. Of course, this is an eight-day event. There's three tables as opposed to four. Great uh, tournament to have a ticket. You can see so many big names. We've got the likes of Luca Purcell, Mark Selby, Sean Murphy, Stuart Bingham, all to come here today. Tomorrow, scheduled to see the likes of Ronnie O'Sullivan, Mark Allen as well. All the big hitters, Karen Wilson, John Higgins, in due course. And... Uh, the players seem to enjoy coming here as well. It's a venue that you have a bad word about, actually. No, very much so. I, I did actually make a prediction, Dave, at the end of the last frame, that when Ishbury popped out of the arena, it be a while getting him back in because it is an absolute maze of doors and corridors and all sorts backstage at the waterfront. And uh, you can get lost. And I'm not suggesting he has, but he's still not back from quite a long break. So hopefully he'll come back safely <laughs> Yeah. resume. Well well, you're right. I mean, if you don't know the venue, then it can take a bit of getting used to exactly where you're going. But uh, when he does come back, it's a big frame three for him. If he can, well, A, get in and B, start to make a break or two, it's still a chance to turn this round. He'd be feeling good. I'm sure he's been looking forward to this match since qualifying. Easy feat to come through those qualifiers. He won two matches to do so. But now he's up against this man. Yeah, he's sort of thrust into the spotlight aren't you playing Judd because he's always going to be either on the the main table or very prominently although it's a different setup here with three tables I don't think it's particularly as much of an advantage as you can see those three tables all in the one arena lots of people looking 
at the, all of the matches, including that far table where Matt Selt is playing currently. He's they're in the first frame with Luhu Shan. It would be a difficult one to call those two, but uh, maybe at, at the waterfront, it isn't such a huge difference playing on the main table as it would be other venues. Well, whoever wins this match between Lu Hai Chan and Matt Selt will play the winner of the Trump match. And thankfully, each preach made his way back, so we're ready for frame three. Both great. Just come for break. So Judd Trump 2-0 up. Remember, every event this year, this calendar year, he's reached the quarterfinals. 14 tournaments, 14 quarterfinals. Can he carry his bat <laughs> through the year and get to at least that stage? Of course, he's gone further in quite a few of those. It would be a remarkable run of consistency. Yeah, really good pot. Cube on a little close to the side cushion. The, and the red didn't go in cleanly, but it was still a very difficult shot to play and get. And this is going to be difficult to pot this with enough pace to get away from the right cushion back for a red. Now, it's a bit of a shame. I don't think he's on anything. Very difficult offset plant, this one, which he might be looking to get away up down the table anyway. Yeah, not attempting the pot. HP Singh Chada, eight. So just half an hour playing time. As I say, this frame, I think, really is a, a big one for Charder. He goes 3-0 down. It's going to be very, very hard to turn that round. I think he made a lot of friends in Brentwood, though. He talks really well, doesn't he, very positively about snooker made the decision to come over here not easy to do but he's enjoying himself now he won't enjoy that shot though that has gone wrong the brown it is a natural to play one cushion oh, into the reds deciding to play on the loose one I mean, if he could he could just get on that red by the black and is he on that five well that is if he's on it that's a sensational positional shot that is an incredible shot from brown Six. There was barely any margin for error to get on that red, and it was a key red. May not have got any applause, but that was a wonderful, say, a wonderful positional shot. Well, it's one of those, isn't it? They, you know, when they say you pick it up, 
place it by hand, he couldn't have put it anywhere better. And so what a chance he's given himself because the other big colours were not in good positions. 14. Well, there must have been the temptation to just play the brown at pace and hopefully move balls and just find a way of blasting the reds open. But he played a much more subtle shot than that in the end. Well, this is the shot he played. I can tell 21. you that is the most delightful positional shot you'll see. To play on that red, there's hardly any room, and he was just on it. That's incredible. Great vision. Twenty-two. Twenty. Thirty. Well, we have to play a little delicate cannon here. That's what he did try, I think, although he always had the top red anyway, but I'm sure he played to can the right-hand red, finish on the bottom red of the bunch. Reminding 41. everyone if they'd somehow forgotten why Joe Trump is world number one here, isn't he? He's playing, you know, it's not a barrage of huge breaks or anything hugely 42. spectacular, but it's it's very efficient match play. Well, Matt Sell even watching it rather than his own table. This time to get the Reds open. So he's playing all the shots. Using restraint when he needs to and 46. All out attack when also it's required. That goes to the opposite corner, so what a chance to get a 3-0 lead. 47. In a position where it didn't seem that there were that many on. Yeah, we said it was a big frame for that man, but again 54. he's been watching on in the main and Judd Trump, great chance for three nil and 55. Then he's a massive, massive favorite to progress without really breaking sweat this afternoon. This might try and cannon the second red from the left here. That was the red and he got the cannon, but it didn't quite 62. go as he meant to, despite still being on one. Needs a colour. 63. And it's pretty much an overwhelming scoreline, isn't it? It's exactly what Judd Trump deserves. That wasn't absolutely clean, was 70. it? But he's gone in and he surely. It all started really with 71. that initial shot from the brown to get on that red. There was no margin for error. It's a funny game, isn't it? Sometimes you, you look at all these shots that are spectacular, sort of shot of the tournament reel, and that wouldn't appear on it, but it was a very subtle shot. 
Well, a chance now to add to centuries tally. 27 this season already. 79. It's top of that list, uh, four in front of the next two, Sean Murphy and Mark Selby. There is a prize if anyone can get to 100 in the season. That will be difficult. I was looking back when Trump did it. He made about 60 by Christmas. So 27, obviously, is tournaments to come. 86. But he's going to gonna have to go some. But as long as he's still in these tournaments, he can still do it, obviously. 87. Sort of a season for him. Going to be playing in a lot of events. Probably a big run at the World Championships, which he's probably due to do again. For now, here in Belfast, he is dominant. No, he's looking very good, and if anything, getting better now with each frame. Well, he did say like the venue, didn't he, in the interview at the start? And you can see why. All special memories for him. So this yellow for Judd Trump's first century of the 2024 Northern Ireland Open. 98. <laughs> 1,008 for his career. Got to the 1,000 mark in uh, Cheltenham at the British Open. 103. Seven. Right handed. <laughs> oh. All these the blue in. What's he going to be with the pink? Some sort of double? Sort of frightened if you're a pocket, aren't you? When when he sort of gets to this stage in a frame, it was a great break. <laughs> Underscore by additional shot right at the start. Judd Trump thoroughly dominant, one away from victory, leading three 0 So three 0 here and uh, quite a rapid affair over on the table two as well it's 2-0 to Jack Jones and he's in front in the next as you can see here by 28 points he's leading sorry he's had breaks of 88 and 84 just as he misses that as we pick it up but yeah good start he's playing Alex Ursabaka who's a very talented player he's got a great record against Ronnie O'Sullivan but he's a bit erratic as well never quite sure what you're going to get from him but obviously he's come through the qualifiers to get here so he's dangerous for sure well he's a a bit of a the new Mark Johnson Allen, isn't he? An, <laughs> an old friend of ours who had this wonderful record against Stephen Hendry, but not necessarily went very high up the rankings. You might have to have been following the game for a while to know who I'm speaking about and what the connection is. Yeah, three nil against Hendry, and he had he got a good record against some of the others as well, Mark. Anyway, that's table two. And we saw Matt Selt looking on. That was, he was actually between frames. He'd won the first against Lu Ha Chan. The winner there will play looking like Trump, but certainly the winner of our match on table one. Good that all these players have got here through the, uh, the sort of inclement weather. But as I say, in, and, and snooker players, let's be honest, if, if they don't like something, they'll tell you. But you, you don't hear a bad word about this tournament. It's a very popular venue. Neil Robertson was tweeting this morning about loving being back in Belfast. Got a lot of history and so much support as well. <coughs> Obviously, we go back to the days of Alex Higgins, Dennis Taylor, and now Mark Allen. So a lot of support for these guys, and I'm sure that will continue right through to the final a week today. Remember, all three tables available live across the week on Discovery+. Plus. These are the match stats so far. And even that highest break of 22, that came in that second... Fr uh, sorry, in that first... Fr no, second frame, yeah, when he played on. Just, just when he needed snookers just to get some table time. So, really in live play, he should beat Singh Charter yet really to make an impact.
Well, let's see if Ishbrick Thank Sinclair you. can four. at least avert the Ishbrick whitewash Sinclair here. Judd Trump looking very, very good. He's just had a century, 112. He's had breaks of 72 and 65 before that. 3-0. That's a good pot. That cube was just drifting a little too far for Judd Trump's liking. Would have been a choice of bolt colours had he stopped a better ball's width short of where it is. Now a tricky little cut back on the brown ball. It's not bad. Again, there's a red Five. to the left of the black, which might have been troublesome. But it looks as if he can move it. Six. Well, I mean, this is a very one-sided match against a decent player. I think the key has been that Judd has got in first almost every frame. Very briefly, Spreet put it a red in the black in the last. But Thirteen. The bulk of the chances early have gone to... The world number one. 14. Yes, I mean, this is what you call hitting the ground running. He, sometimes, he says himself, sometimes early on, struggles a bit. And as you mentioned, he, you know, could easily have lost in Riyadh in round one to Wu Yizid, but no sign of that here. That is a terrific shot. That really is, because he forced that cue wall and muscled and it through the bunch. He knew there was that red by the black available. <laughs> Very much. 22. A Judd Trump shot that previous one. You know, he gets, generates such a lot of cue speed. Gets a lot of spin on the ball. Twenty-nine. This is the shot. I mean, he, that cue ball has absolutely fizzed back through the bunch. Okay. Yeah, I mean, there, there are two venues I can think of right now which, which have this appeal. One is here in Belfast, the waterfront where we're at this week, and also the Tempodrome in Berlin is another venue. It's very Five. popular with the players and spectators. Now, the clue is that the tournament is there every year, not chopping and changing different venues. 36. And I think it really helps an event. Players and Fans grow to love them. Defending champion in Berlin is Judd Trump. Another venue he enjoys. Forty-one. bad. Again, he was just playing up the table. I don't know if he knew he'd be on the pink to right middle. Uh, for once, not a good shot. You could see that cue ball was heading to the bottom of those two reds. So it might not be a match over here. Slight misjudgment on that positional shot. Doesn't have to keep the break going, but he would certainly be itching to do so. Thank you. 48. Well, he's got Ishpreet sitting in that chair, and it, he doesn't want to take on too many here, Trump.
and he's still going for it. Huh? So he did take a risk, but it was a calculated one. He, he could have only really stuck the red in which he was playing. It's 3 0 to Jack Jones on table two against Alexander Usenbecker. Jack Jones trying to seal his sort of top 16 seeding for the UK Championship and indeed the Masters. Huge, of course, to get in the Masters for the first time for Jack, runner up at the Crucible. 1 0 Matt Selt on table three against Lou Hai Chan. We've got Luca Brussel to come on this table. Wins, of course. And he's up against Her Guo Chang, who's, as we know, he's very dangerous. Ryan Day against Stan Moody will be table two. Dave Gilbert, the Lei Pei fan, table three. It was close, wasn't it? But he was stretching, and oh goodness, it could be end of match. And if he were to lose the match now from this next visit from Trump, it, it'd be very one sided. It, usually, you get better chances in a match than Ishpreet Singh Chadha has had. Quite get the wide angle, but he still has a left hander Six. able to reach across and take this red on. That black that Judd has just knocked in reminds me very much of one that John Higgins missed in the final against Mark Allen here. 14. From, uh, a point where he was two up with three to play. Didn't get the match won. Allen won it. But he missed a black very similar to that, Higgins. Fifteen. So on the brink of a very convincing victory. We are more. Yes, it has been convincing. 48 minutes and whatever's left. This is match ball. Ishpreet Sinchard had such a good run in Brentwood, but it was kind of into the lion's den here in Belfast against a man who's won four Northern Ireland Open titles and clearly is in the mood for a fifth. Judd Trump in every department today has been very impressive. It's a city that likes its showman. Alex Higgins, of course, the trophy's named after him. We've got Jimmy White playing tomorrow, Ronnie O'Sullivan. And Judd Trump, he's certainly in that lineage as an entertainer, but also as a seriously impressive champion. He's had Ishpreet in all sorts of trouble. His mother's there looking on, but... ...day... ...had very little really straightforward to go at. Yes, he looked pretty sharp all the way through. You know, it's not been a barrage of huge breaks. He did make the one century, but it's just been very good all-round play. Sometimes with Trump, the cue ball does go the long way round, and it's happened again here. Hold you know, one. he hasn't always had the most immaculate cue ball control, but that's kind of the way that Judd Trump plays. And Ishpreet really has been a spectator for the most part. 
Success 96% safety rated. Okay. The two together have been pretty formidable. That one stays out, but all the damage has been done. So in just under 50 minutes, Judd Trump gets his campaign for a fifth Northern Ireland Open title underway in style here in Belfast. A 4-0 whitewash over India's Ishpreet Singh Chada. Up next, Matt Sell or Lou Hai-Chan for Judd Trump. But frankly, who wants to play him right now? So we can hear more from uh, Judd Trump with his reflections on this wonderful...